Hey everyone, I've received a few comments lately about people not having positive interactions with topical minoxidil, and these comments concern minoxidil not being an effective growth stimulant for some people, and other concerns in regards to how long you could stay on minoxidil if you can actually hop off of minoxidil eventually and keep your gains. And to keep it short, no, you can't do that. If you stop using minoxidil, you lose your gains. This is <laughs> irregardless if you've been using minoxidil for three years or four years, if you stop long term, you will reset the clock quite a bit. But also, I had people talk about dandruff. But another surprising comment that I saw, some viewers mentioned that they have experienced lightheadedness and drops in blood pressure. Now, in regards to the dandruff and itchiness, I too have had this issue. The itchiness was solved by using oils as the alcohol content of the topical minoxidil was what caused the itchiness and the drying of my scalp. Dandruff and dead skin showing up in my hair decreased with washing up to four times a week with coconut oil-based shampoos. The very rare case of lightheadedness and drops in blood pressure is primarily due to individuals having high systemic absorption of minoxidil, which causes them to experience these low blood pressure symptoms. To those who do not see any difference in hair quality after using minoxidil, or if you aren't fond of the idea of your hair follicles becoming reliant on minoxidil, and in case you didn't know, let me reiterate this, you cannot stop using minoxidil if you see growth. There are countless stories online, you can look this up. Or if you are indeed having low blood pressure symptoms, then there may be another solution, stemoxidine. Now, stemoxidine is a topical hair loss treatment that was created by L'Oreal in 2012. It is a P4H inhibitor, and it works by shortening the kinogen phase of the hair growth cycle by inhibiting P4H. Now, stemoxidine is able to create a hypoxia environment, which cues hair follicle stem cells to start producing hair and shorten the kinogen phase. And in turn, longer and denser hair grows out of the follicles. The kinogen phase is the period of the hair cycle in which the hair follicle remains empty after telogen hair has shed and before a new antigen hair emerges. So the idea is by shortening the kinogen phase, hair, in theory, will begin growing sooner during the antigen phase. In L'Oreal's clinical studies, stemoxidine at a concentration of 5% was said to improve hair density by 4%. There's a good write-up about stemoxidine here on minoxidilmax.com. I'll leave the link to that article in the description. Stemoxidine is designed to be used only for three months as it is purported to lose efficacy after the third month. So this should be appealing to those of you who aren't fond of the idea of having to use something like minoxidil all the time. With stemoxidine, you can take a break before you start using it again for another three months. Even though minoxidil stands as a better hair stimulant in most cases, depending on if you are a good responder or whether or not you would want to use minoxidil long term, as it cannot be discontinued without major hair loss, stemoxidine may serve as a good replacement. Now, personally, I don't plan on discontinuing minoxidil. However, I am curious about adding stemoxidine to my main hair loss stack. Stemoxidine 5%, minoxidil 5%, and 1 mg oral finasteride. When it comes to hair growth stimulants, stemoxidine 5% and minoxidil 5% seem to complement each other. I think that if minoxidil shortens the telogen phase and causes hair to go into antigen, all while stemoxidine shortens the kinogen phase, the phase in between telogen and antigen, the resulting hair should be better or close to pre-androgenic alopecia density. I'm not sure how much of an impact this will have on me because I'm already a good responder to minoxidil and I'm well within my treatment, about a year in. I would assume someone who didn't do anything before would see greater benefit, but I could be wrong. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and let me know what you think about stemoxidine. Is this something that you might want to try out for yourself? I think the most appealing part about this is that you can actually discontinue using stemoxidine after using it for only three months. So you can actually take a break and then come back to using it again. I think from what I've seen from some Reddit forums and some other websites, people have taken about a two to three month break 
in between their stamoxidine treatment periods, which again lasts for about three months. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.